Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here with some more pretty interesting things for you that you might not know about. And in this video, I'll be focusing on Mad Max. Avalanche Studios wasn't the first choice for the Mad Max game, and instead the franchise creator, George Miller, wanted it to be in the hands of another wasteland building team, Interplay Entertainment. And in case you don't know who these guys are, it's the creators of the original Fallout games. Miller wanted the Mad Max game to have a similar RPG feel to the original Fallout games, but with a Mad Max spin on it. But EA kinda jumped in the way, offering Miller $20 million, which was, quite simply, an offer he couldn't refuse. However, the game was shut down due to issues when filming Fury Road, but was later revived when Warner Brothers ended up getting the rights for the movie. Because of this, the game rights were stripped from EA and given to Warner Brothers, who passed the game rights over to Avalanche Studios, disregarding both Interplay and EA in the process. Now, I bet the first time you popped open the map and saw the scale of it, you probably thought to yourself, that's a pretty damn big map. But if you think it ends there, you'll be quite wrong. You can actually drive your magnum opus off the map and out into the unforgiving desert. There's no invisible walls or obstructing canyons to get in your way. Not only can you venture outside the map, but it's also known as its own region called the Big Nothing. But there's a catch. There's no resources here, like food, gas or water, and Max can start to randomly take damage. Back in the year of 2008, another different Mad Max game was talked about by George Miller. He later on partnered with the director of God of War 2, Corey Barlog, after he left Sony, with full intent on creating a Mad Max game. Now, the Mad Max movie released in 2015, Fury Road, was a fully loaded, live action epic, but originally there were ideas that it could have been an R rated 3D animated film. This alternate choice would have reflected the Mad Max game, as it was planned to be a tie in with the animated film, and released at the same time. But Miller changed his mind at a later date and decided to do a live action film instead, which turned out to be Fury Road. Finding food in Mad Max is a lifesaver, literally, and the main food source that you'll find in the wilderness comes in the form of dog food. If you look at the cans where Max starts chomping down on the dog food, we can see that the cans have Dinky D written on them. Not only is this the name of your beloved bomb disposal pooch, but it's also the same can that's used in the second Mad Max movie, which Max can be seen eating out of. It's also revealed later on in the film that Max carries a box full of Dinky D in his car. So, although the Mad Max movie, Fury Road, released in the same year as the game, they're not actually directly connected with each other, and the game isn't a tie-in of the film. The main reason because of this is down to Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, i.e. the publishers pass record when working on games based on movie franchises. They learnt this from the hugely successful Batman Arkham series. Standalone games seem to have more success than games based on specific films, which quite often tend to suck. And so it was decided that the Mad Max game wasn't to be based on Fury Road or the other movies, but instead be its own thing. That said, it still features some familiar locations and links with the Mad Max universe, including places like Gastown and the Thunderdome. Dinky D meat and veggies might not seem like the most pleasant thing to eat to get your health back, but Max also eats quite a few other things in the game that'd even make Bear Grylls proud. Maggots from dead bodies are a satisfying snack for when you're out and about on the wasteland, or if you choose to farm them at your strongholds but you can also kill and eat small animals such as rats and lizards that scurry around on the floor. All you have to do is catch it first and then stomp on its little head. Then you can chow down on some tasty fresh raw meat. Lovely. Now when we saw the first signs of a Mad Max game at E3 back in 2013, there was one thing that caused quite a bit of controversy. It stood out amongst fans and really got under their skin. The fact that the Australian character Max had an American accent. To most people it wasn't much of a big deal, and probably didn't even notice, but the hardcore fans did, and it caused a pretty big outcry amongst the community. But it wasn't long until Avalanche took action and set to resolve this issue, giving Max his Aussie voice back. The studio founder, Christopher Sundberg, posted a tweet to basically reassure fans that they had listened to all the negative feedback about the voice acting, and they were going to change it for the final game's release. So now, because the audience has spoken, Max now has his original accent back. Want to take a snapshot of something in the environment? Well, you can. All you gotta do is tap both the R3 and L3 thumbsticks down together at the same time to enter camera mode. This pauses time and lets you pan around in the air, allowing you to see from loads of different angles and take pictures. 
Not only is this good for capturing that cool exploding car, or a pretty landscape photo, but it's also good to use when you're searching camps trying to find items and scrap, as you can view from higher angles and look around areas like a sneaky little drone. If you want to use another camera in the car to look through the first person perspective whilst you drive around, all you've got to do is tap down twice on the D-pad and you'll be viewing the world through the eyes of Max himself. So that's pretty much it for this video guys, I hope you learned something new, and if you did, make sure you smack that like button. Subscribe to see everything on Mad Max and loads of other games too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.